repeat in the 10th grade for the third time. Is there anything you can suggest to help him get to the drive through Can you do OnlyFans? Take off your shoes. Let me see what kind of feet you're working with. Come on. <laughs> Come on, baby. I just want out. Yes, no. Hey everybody, Alex the Critic here, and there's nothing that inspires more dread within me than a lame, unfunny trailer for a reboot of a show that nobody asked for. Case in point, let's talk about the latest disappointment in Netflix's long line of cinematic abortions, Good Times. Good Times is an upcoming animated sitcom centered around the antics of the Evans, a black family who live in the projects of Chicago, Illinois. Created by Carl Jones, and executive produced by huge stars such as NBA superstars Steph Curry and animation veteran Seth MacFarlane, the show serves as a modernized spin on the live-action sitcom from the 70s of the same name. On March 27th, Netflix, the distributors of the show, dropped a the very first official trailer for it on YouTube, where it garnered an intense amount of hate, the likes of which I haven't seen since HBO dropped the first few trailers for Velma, and just like I did for that show, I'm here to explain why that hate is, for the most part, deserved. Before I get into anything, however, I just want to make one thing perfectly clear. I am not a fan of the original Good Time show. In fact, I didn't even know what it was until I actively went out of my way to search it up. As such, my dislike of this trailer is not spurred by any blind nostalgia, nor by how poorly this reboot seems to be keeping the spirit of the original work alive. Rather, I just think it's a bad trailer. With all of that said, start rolling the footage, editor. I have important news. Let me guess. The state called, and they want to cut you a disability check for your face. Hold up. You can get paid for that? This is from a fool who stares at his orange juice every morning. It says concentrate on the box. <laughs> who the dummy now? All right. To be entirely fair, these two jokes are not the worst note to start off on. They're decently funny, and they set up the dynamic between the main cast pretty well. The producers even demonstrate some of the traits of the characters to us, such as the brother being an idiot. Sadly, it all goes downhill from here, starting with the very next line. Shit, me for not wearing a condom. Ugh. The jabs that the brother and sister threw at each other were creative, while this insult is the exact opposite. If you're gonna have the dad tell his kids how much he regrets having them, then at least do it in a way that I haven't heard about a bajillion times before in other shows. By the way, writers, way to break the mold there. A jaded, jerk-ass father who lets it be openly known how much he wishes that he hadn't settled down and started a family? I have never seen that before in an animated sitcom. <gasps> Shadows fall over my heart. It all started with my grandfather James Evans. I like how the first character whose name gets dropped in this trailer is someone who's not even part of the main cast and doesn't even appear in this trailer. All because the producers had to shoehorn in a reference to the original show that isn't gonna make sense to anybody who hasn't already watched it. Nice going there, guys. My job as the man of this house is to take care of this family no matter what. And let me guess, the father's idea of taking care of his family is to physically assault an innocent kid for their crime of dating his daughter, right? Just wanna let you know, I'ma take good care of Gray. Tell me you guys have no original ideas without telling me that you have no original ideas. What I would 
give to be a fly on the wall when Netflix's producers met with Steph Curry to try and get him to sign off on this project. Considering the stupid and fucked up shit that a lot of NBA superstars have been caught doing, this is probably how the conversation went. Listen, Mr. Curry, we're well aware that you are an accomplished basketball player who will no doubt be enshrined in the Basketball Hall of Fame. And we're also well aware that you have a very good reputation with the general public. Well, how would you like to piss all of that goodwill away by throwing money at a shitty animated television show that we are producing that will shit all over your own race of people? Shut up and take my money! <laughs> Pleasure doing business with you, Mr. Curdy. Junior's repeating the 10th grade for the third time. Is there anything you can suggest to help him get to the drive-thru? Can you do OnlyFans? Take off your shoes. Let me see what kind of feet you're working with. Hello, fellow youth. We are hip and with it because we know what OnlyFans is and we're cracking jokes about it. Aren't you getting a kick out of that? Also, why the hell is Wanda Sykes in so many of these terrible cartoons? Seriously, first Big Mouth, then Q-Force, then Velma, and now this! You cannot be so pressed for work that you're forced to take on roles that have you saying stupid shit like this. You have a net worth of 10 million dollars for God's sake. You can afford to say no. She better not have taken on this role for the culture because that would be extra embarrassing for her. Heavenly Father, College Redeemer, uh, if you could just help us. Wow, black people flocking to race-swapped versions of established historical figures because they can only relate to said figures if they share the same surface level characteristics? I didn't know I was watching a fucking documentary about the state of race relations in this country. Also, why the hell is God wearing nail polish? Don't tell me he's gonna be a sassy gay black man. The last thing this show needs is yet another negative stereotype laid on top of all of the other negative stereotypes it's loaded with. Son, it's for you. New phone, who this? Ah yes, because if Jesus Christ were black, he would be a gamer with dreadlocks who talks as though he's from the hood, even though he lived and died in the Middle East thousands of years ago. This is not only very funny, but also very creative, because it has never ever been done before. And wait, was the original good times like this? Were God and Jesus and other metaphysical beings a prominent part of its stories? Or is this just an example of one of the many Family Guy style cutaways that this show is going to have? Either way, none of this is making me laugh, so the producers failed on that front. At least they ain't got that drug dealing baby under my roof no more. Mm, man, my mouth ready for some milk right now. Dalvin, why are you so breast obsessed? It's childish, man. Bruh, I'm a baby. I can't get no more childish than that. <sighs> Where do I even begin? First off, has Seth MacFarlane just become creatively bankrupt? How many shows has this nigga created or otherwise produced that are about a dysfunctional middle class family? And how many of those shows have a baby who's smarter and far more mature than his age would suggest? And really, making the baby a sex crazed drug dealer? Was that really the funniest thing you could come up with? God, this feels like something I would read in an edgy comic that was written by 12 year olds. And holy shit, we have to take a second to dump on this awful art direction. The lip syncing and character movements are incredibly choppy and lifeless. I've seen amateur Newgrounds animations from the early to mid 2000s that look more fluid and energetic than this. As for the character designs of this show, they range from decent enough to, oh my god what in the nine circles of hell am I looking at? 
who looked at the design of this woman and thought to themselves, yeah, that looks really good. Color it, shade it, and then paste it onto this scene. Then, who looked at that and thought, yeah, this scene of Delvin lusting over this literal demon looks so good that we should stick it into our very first trailer for the show. If designs like that went bad enough, you've also got the really stupid looking ones, like that of the father, who looks like an overstuffed tomato. If y'all are gonna write something that is completely soulless, could y'all at least not make it look soulless? It's a real shithole. It's the system. They put the guns and drugs on the streets. Oh god, the animation just got worse. Say what you will about the animation in shows like Paradise PD and Brickleberry, but at least it looked fucking finished. This shit, on the other hand, looks like it was thrown together in the span of a couple days. And here's the thing. I wouldn't even be bashing the animation this hard if the characters and stories that we were being advertised were in any way well written or interesting, but they aren't. Take these next few clips for example. This is getting dangerous. I won't just sit back and let you put yourself in harm's way. I love you too very much. Everything, everything back. The revolution will not be televised. Come on, Rosa Paws, can't you just enjoy this? So, what exactly is this show trying to be? An episodic Family Guy ripoff with light zany humor? Or a serious plot-heavy BoJack Horseman ripoff with dark grounded humor? I have no fucking idea because the scenes that were thrown into this trailer fail to give the show a solid identity. I don't even know what the story is going to be about. What's this place? Who are these people? Who's that person? Why exactly is the system delivering boxes of guns to the people in this apartment building in broad daylight in front of witnesses? Is this a serious plot point that's going to take up multiple episodes of this season? Or is this just a random fucking cutaway that the producers are merely playing up for dramatic effect? Who's this person? Who are these people? Why is Elon Musk in their living room? <laughs> I just wanted to make sense. We're just as good as the Evans of old. Which is why we felt the need to sully the good name of this franchise with negative black stereotypes and foot fetish jokes. Give us your money now, please. Didn't that just die no might? And here we have yet another shoehorned reference to the original show that won't make sense to people like myself that have never watched it, tells us nothing about the story or characters of the show, and isn't even all that funny or entertaining because it was ripped entirely out of context. This scene was only put in the trailer to remind the audience that this was indeed a reboot of a pre-existing work. That should be proof enough that this bullshit is dead on arrival. But the truth is, we're the Evans of New. Once again, what is this show trying to be and who is it for? It can't be for fans of the original sitcom because I have a hard time believing that that show had anywhere close to this level of zany cartoony madness nor that it played into negative stereotypes of the black American community. It can't be for people who never watched the original show because nothing that has been presented to us in this trailer thus far is the least bit funny or entertaining. There are dozens of shows out there that do what this one is trying to do a million times better. So A, why wouldn't I just go watch those shows? And B, what else do you have that's going to hook me in? Tell them the answer, Dr. Cox. Nothing. You know, if you're gonna try to be offensive for the sake of making people laugh, 
you're gonna have to try a little bit harder than just flashing a negative stereotype on the screen and hoping that people like myself will laugh and go, LOL, I can't believe that they're portraying black people like this. Okay, that scene of the dog being traumatized by watching his owners have sex might have been clever if they were doing it doggy style in front of him. I mean, come on! The sight gag was right there! How could you guys fuck this up? What about the struggle? We're black. It'll be here tomorrow. Ah yes, because every show with an all-black cast needs to talk about systemic racism, police brutality, and poverty. Those are the only topics that these shows are allowed to touch on. We get it. This is a show with and about black people. Please stop reminding us. We are not blind. God, this song is as annoyingly on the nose and obnoxious as the one that the CW used for their trailer to their Batwoman show. Looks like there's only one scene left to cover, so let's just get this over with. Wait a minute, the baby, little baby, and baby baby? Get it? Their street names all have baby in them because they're babies. And they all look like famous rappers because those are the only black celebrities that these producers know about. Isn't that just hilarious, you guys? Laugh! Please laugh! Too many babies around this crib. <laughs> Okay, you know what? That scene was actually pretty funny. If the entire trailer had been full of utterly insane moments like that, I might have actually been interested enough to pirate a couple episodes of this show. Instead, the producers saved the best jokes for the beginning and end of this trailer, and then filled the rest of it with complete and total garbage. I haven't been this bewildered by a trailer for a show in a long time. Who at Netflix signed off on this because they genuinely thought that it would leave a good first impression on people? This trailer does a horrible job at explaining what type of show this is going to be, what type of stories it's going to be telling, and why we should be interested in seeing more of the adventures that these characters are gonna go on. On top of that, the jokes it highlights aren't all that funny, the characters don't seem the least bit endearing, and the animation just looks like something a college student would throw together for a class project that they waited until the last minute to actually work on. The worst part about all of this, however, is that this trailer spits in the face of fans of the original sitcom it's rebooting by choosing to push some pretty offensive stereotypes of black American culture onto them while at the same time forcing some ham-fisted messaging about systemic racism and the struggle in an effort to prove that they get it. Whatever the case is for why this show was even made in the first place, I will absolutely not be watching it because there are too many other, better cartoons out there that deserve my time. I'm Alex the Critic and I'll see you guys next time.